What is up, everybody? This is Tessa. Welcome back to Strong Female Lead. Trisha is actually out this week on assignment. She's recording Sex Unique podcast. Um, and so if you haven't already listened to that podcast, go ahead and find them. She's tagging all of our stuff from last week. Um, it's an amazing podcast. Even if you don't already watch Vanderpump, I listened to it. It was a riot. They had great chemistry. Super proud of you, Trish. Uh, but this week, we're going to bring a special co-host, one of my greatest friends. Uh, she's amazing. Um, you need to find her on Instagram. She's at LN is dead. Uh, this is my best friend, Ellen. Hi. Yay. <laughs> um, Ellen is my great friend uh, from college. We met like 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and she's been stuck with me ever since, because I'm yeah. more like a barnacle to most people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely not here by my will. You guys can't see it, but there's like a ball and chain, like cartoon style. Okay, so this is the second time this has come up, and I don't kidnap or hold people against their will. I just want to make that, again, clear from the previous episode where that had come up. I don't And know. that is not something that I've done. If it keeps coming up, I feel like there's a little, isn't there like truth in every lie, you know? Like, I don't, I a think little it's bit. like three lies and then the truth. Is that a thing? That's a game that children play. <laughs> like, two truths and a lie. Yeah, that's, that's what I meant. But so if, the two, if the two truths are maybe I kidnap people, then it's a, it's very convincing. Kidnapping <laughs> is only a crime once the person gets away. I mean, you should be honored to be kidnapped by Tessa. I mean, that's though. true. Yeah, that's I, true. Would, I mean, if I got kidnapped by Tessa, it'd be kind of nice. Like, I mean, at least you have a great vacation. I'd love yeah. That. It's gonna be good baked goods. Yeah, I'll you know, make you something. Cozy PJs. Yeah, Tessa would probably for sure, for sure. Tessa would probably legit kidnap you, put you in like a room with like silk sheets on the bed <laughs> and like give you footy pajamas and like a warm cup of tea and be like, Okay dear, like take a nap. Yeah. Like it's not when we say kidnap, it's mostly just like it's eleven AM on a Sunday. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's also eleven AM on a Sunday. <laughs> and here we are against our will. Yeah. <laughs> Previously, yeah. on the, the long time, yeah, yeah, it came to light that one of the three of us has sociopathic tendencies, mm. not disclosing who for privacy, uh, but but just so that you're aware. I think I was already aware. I don't know. I mean, I've been I've known you ten years. So I, I know. Like, I, I think know. it's. For, I don't want to say anyone's name. <laughs> <laughs> if we had to pick someone, it's probably not. It's probably you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you'll have to listen to all the previous podcasts to figure out which one it is. I mean, again, I feel like I'm, I got it, but <laughs> <laughs> unclear. So, well, I guess we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this week on the podcast, we are bringing you another TV show. Uh, this is an amazing series that's on Hulu. It's available now. You should be watching it. And if you haven't already, please pause the podcast and watch this amazing series. There's only six episodes, about a half hour each. You've got time because we've got time. Uh, this week's episode is shrill. Um, let's see. I got my lotion and my gum and my shoelaces for my brown shoes. Um, and could I also get um, the morning after pill? Hey, Nick, do we sell the morning after pill? Oh, oh pill? that's okay. We don't need to bother Nick. He's doing pill business. Oh, really? Calendar editor, but I would really love to write more. And but I hate you, millennial dumpling. Work hard and pay your dues. So that's a maybe then, right? <laughs> are you liking the thin menu? It's fine. Well, are you doing the almonds between meals? Yeah, they're so satisfying. Sometimes when I have six almonds, I feel like I had twelve almonds. So Shrill follows Annie, who's described as an overweight young woman who wants to change her life, but not her body. Annie's trying to make it as a journalist while juggling bad boyfriends, sick parents, and a perfectionist boss, all while the world around her deems her not good enough because of her weight. She starts to realize that she's as good as everyone else and acts. That's just a brief little synopsis of Shrill, which describes the show but does not do it justice. <laughs> it was awesome. So, so, so amazing. It's like originally based on the book by Lindy West, Shrill Notes from a Loud Woman, and I first heard of Lindy West like maybe three years ago on the Dear Sugar podcast because I'm a love a podcast. She came on that show. Um, someone had written into Dear Sugar is um, talking about um, she was like an overweight uh, girl, I think like maybe also from the Pacific Northwest. Um, and so they brought on Lindy West to talk to talk to the girl um, as like a third sugar. 
Yeah. And it was lovely. And I was like, who is this? And I went on a deep, crazy dive researching <laughs> her. And I was like, who is this? A lot of people know things. But I don't know. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, so, and then I found I found her and I read some of her articles. And I was like, this is great. And then like maybe a year ago, I heard that her that she would gotten A.D. Bryant yeah. uh, attached to this project. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. Perfect. Yeah. And perfect casting. Did you read Shrill? I did not read Shrill. I have to admit, I also have not read Shrill. Even though I do, like, I agree. Like, I've read a lot of Wendy's, like, I follow her, like, on social media and stuff. And yeah. she's a really great writer. Her story is amazing. I see some of it yeah. in, in Shrill, but I think, like, her story and how she's my yeah. husband and all that yeah. is so interesting. And it's very, like, um, it's, she's just, like, such a powerful person you know what I mean like she's a very powerful writer she's powerful like if you ever see her like in a video speaking like she's just like I would love to like one day like meet her or yeah. you know just so just be around her yeah she's a very like if you want to do any kind of like reading or experience about like what it is like what it's like for like fat people and like you know learning more about yourself and like more about the way society like is built to treat you like Lindy's a really great person to start mm-hmm. reading about and like you know, going into. So yeah, when I found out that she had sold this as a series and the A.D. Bryant's attached and that local celebrity Samantha Irby wrote one of the episodes, Love I was it. like, get out of my face. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I think I was literally counting down when this was releasing, like, yes. for weeks, like, before it actually came out on Hulu. Yes. I was so excited. And A.D. Bryant is, yeah. well, she's Chicago famous. She exactly. Yeah. Here at Second City. Yeah. And she's she left for SNL right when I was starting comedy, and I was like, everyone was like, "Oh, did you hear about like Amy? She got like yeah uh, picked up. Like she's gonna be on SNL." And I was like, "I don't know who this is, but congratulations." <laughs> Good for her. Like, Good for her. But and then it turns out she's a total she's powerhouse. Amazing. She's great. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So I mean, watching Shrill for the first time was definitely like. Very, like, I mean, as, like, the, you know, audience can't see me. Like, I am fat, and I've been fat, like, my whole life. Um, and you don't see yourself anywhere, ever. And then seeing yours, like, and then to have, like, the first kind of, like, media that focuses not only on someone who, like, looks like me, but in a way that is very, like, everything is bright. You know what I mean? Like, eighty wears super cute clothes. Yes. Throughout. Yeah. Like, even her, like, you know... When she doesn't like herself. Even her, she like... She still looks I'm very just gonna cute. say, like, even her, like, I'm trying to hide my body outfits mm-hmm. are still adorable. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, her apartment is really cute. She's very good at her job. Like, she's got a good... You know, she... They kind of go into her relationship with her parents a little bit, but, like, at the foundation, she's got, like, good friends, good relationship mm-hmm. with her parents. Like, she's just, like, a normal girl who also is fat. Yeah. And... I don't think I'd ever, 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 ever seen that before. I think since, like... That's not a mom. And then... Exactly. Well, like, the younger version of these Yes. Because I'm, like, I, I, I can think of, like, fat people who are on TV, but, yeah. like, as a side character or... Yeah. Uh, it's always a type. You know yeah. What I mean? And it's never the focus. Mm-hmm. And it's never someone who is driving the story or driving the story in a way that is, like, I have real emotions. I have mm-hmm. real things that I want to accomplish that aren't just, like you know, be thin one day, you yeah. know? Um, the only other people I could really think of before this were, like, you know, Queen Latifah or Missy yeah. Elliott. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. for a long time, they were the only people that I ever saw who, like, looked like me and also were, like, I'm going to be, like, you know, I'm going to talk about, like, dating guys and I'm going to mm-hmm. talk about, you know, like, loving my body and I'm going to, like, wear whatever the hell I want. Like, they were mm-hmm. the only example of that. And then I think it's really nice to have that same thing in a very different way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, because this show isn't about, you know, like, it's not, you know, follow the chronicles of Annie dating everybody, you know, all over the place, but it is, you know, like, it's just real about her life. Yeah. Which I like. I also really appreciated that, like, and I don't know if this was unintentional or intentional, but, like, the background actors uh, were all just, like, normal yes. looking like various sizes, very, very people. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't like a like what you would normally see like as as like background actors, which yeah. was just like very uh, thin, thin, <laughs> white, very white. perfect looking. And I was like, especially since I'm assuming that they're in like Portland. I think they're supposed to be in Portland. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, none of this makes sense to me mm-hmm. anywhere else. <laughs> uh, this is an extremely diverse cast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to Portland. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but I think like right, yeah. like right out the gate. Like, everything, pretty much everything that Annie 
does or goes through from beginning to end. Like, people think I'm joking and, like, I'm being hyperbolic about it. Every single thing that happens to her in this series, like, has happened to me. And has happened to literally every other fat person I know. Ugh. Like, from the very beginning, when she's, like, trying on that little shirt, she's, like, getting ready for work, and she's, like, putting on her little outfit, and she, like, doesn't. She keeps, like, pulling at her shirt because she doesn't like the way it's sitting on her body, and then she, like, pulls it over her knees to see if she can stretch it out. Ooh. That's literally me with a million pairs of cheap tights from Walgreens. Oh. Like, <laughs> trying to, like, stretch, like, just being, like well, I know this isn't really for me, but I had to do something and, like, just trying to make it work. And then she goes into the kitchen and she's picked a different outfit that, like, covers up the area that she was having a problem with. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, like, that sequence of events is so, like, I started crying immediately. I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like here she is. <laughs> I was just like, okay, so let's just talk about episode one really quick. I, I mean, in one way, I think that they started the series off was, like, in such a good way. Mm-hmm. She's like, uh, going into that coffee shop, and she's like laughing at that fucking, fucking poster. Tanya. There is a small person inside of you dying to get out. Oh, well, I hope that small person's okay in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it can seem impossible, but you can do this. You weren't meant to carry around all this extra weight. Oh, wow. Um, very cool. <laughs> I know I can help you. Well, that's very nice. Thank you. No, thank yourself for the amazing way you're going to feel after you give yourself permission to be well. Thank you, me. <laughs> you could be so pretty. Yeah. Well, once again, people think I'm joking. That shit has happened to me. I cannot that, believe yeah. somebody would say that. Like, yeah. and and like feeling and, like, her wrist touch your wrong? body. You, yeah. Ew. Yeah. It's kind of like, and this is not a real comparison in any other way other than this one small way. It's a little bit like being pregnant, but, like, people just kind of assume your body isn't real. Like, it's not yours. It's, like, something that is around for them to, like, interact with in some way. Yeah. You know, either by, like... it's, like, more of a female experience in that, like, body autonomy is, like... I think it definitely is another layer because she's a woman. And, like, you know, women go through that more. Yeah. But I was definitely, like, right... It was was during the summer because it was hot as fuck. And I was riding my bike from uh, the school I work at at the time in Boys Town. And I was riding up to Andersonville, so just like straight up Clark, because I had like an after school kind of like gig two days a week. Mm-hmm. And I had a very small window of time to get there. And so I was like just trying to book it on this bike. And it was like so hot. I was sweating. I was not wearing workout clothes because, again, I'm going from work to work. So I was probably in like, you know, some jeans or something and a t shirt. And I was obviously looking like I'm struggling because I am. Like, I'm trying to, like, get somewhere on time. And I was at the intersection of uh, Irving Park and Clark. And imagine that intersection. It's huge. Yeah. There's cars everywhere. It's always busy. There's buses. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in the bike lane all the way over. And some other guy on a bike is, like, you know, in the turn lane. So, like, two rows of cars away from me starts screaming at me. And I'm like, okay, so I'm, you know, I'm from Chicago. I'm like, I'm not going to turn my head for a fucking weirdo screaming on the street. So I was like, you know, I like ignored him for a little while and then figured out he's talking to me. So I was like, okay, like, sir, what's going on? And he's like, he's like, come over here. Like, he's like, you meet me up at the corner. He's like, I'm going to give you my number and I'm going to, you know, we're going to get you looking like me. He's like, we're going to get you, we're going to, we're going to figure it out. He thought I was like exercising in jeans. Like he thought I was out there trying to like, you know, be Tone Tanya or whatever the fuck. And I was like, first of all, sir, this man looked like old leather. Like, he was not, <laughs> he was that kind of dude who, like, maybe was, like, you Hashtag know, goals. really built, like, 20 years ago and mm-hmm. has since kind of, like, he had that shrunken skin body. look. Yeah. <laughs> like and I was like, head. sir, and he was, like, a, you know, a, a, a firm, like, you know, orange, bronze, like, a very, mm-hmm. like, has spent maybe 30 years too long in the sun. Mm-hmm. And I was just very, like, first of all, why are you talking to me? Like, we're in the street. Like, I'm literally, <laughs> like, I'm in the street. Like, there's, like, bust exhaust blowing in my face. Like, don't speak to me right now. And second of all, like, whose business is this of yours? Like, who are you talking to? And why? Do I, I, third of all, even if I'm in the market... You're not the model that I'm looking for, <laughs> like, no. sir. Like, who? I just can't believe people say shit like that. Yeah, all the time. To people. And then, like, uh, the so the next thing, like, she's you know has that interaction with Tanya, and Tanya like you know grabs her wrist, and she says that classic line, like, "There's a thin girl inside of you." I was just like, wants to come out, jaw on the floor, like, 
You said that to someone? Yeah. Like, well, I know it's, like, written for her, but I was like, yeah. I think, like, are you just trying to think of the most important? No, but that's a real you thing that say people say all the time. I'm like, there's, there's a thin person like within you. Because again, people don't think that fat people are real people. Like, they don't see you're not a person yet because you're not a thin person. You know what I mean? Like everyone who's like fat phobia and like the fear of like becoming fat and therefore unhealthy, even though that's like not a true yeah, correlation. comparison yeah. or correlation. Like the fear of that is so ingrained in society and through, like, capitalism and through, like, you know, white European idealization of, you know, how the body should look and what beauty should be, that it, it's, like, in everything. Like, people constantly, they're like, oh, no, there's, like, a, there's a, the thin you is waiting to come out. Mm-hmm. Like, well, I'm, I'm still a me. Like, yeah, I'm a me now. <laughs> I'm and already. this person coming? And, and even, look, I mean, I can get really thinner. Good. I'm always going to be, like, you know, it, it doesn't matter, like, I could lose a bunch of weight and still be fat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, and you can lose a bunch of weight and be thin and not be healthy. So it's it's just a very interesting, like, you, you're not real yet. There's something you need to do to, like, become a person. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, that thing is lose weight and be thin. And they just don't understand. Because, again, like, you know, people like Tom Tanya have done a lot of work and mm-hmm. have done a lot of things that are uncomfortable. Like, you know, they've not eaten a lot of things, spent a lot of time in the gym, doing a lot of things that they maybe don't like or were hard. And it's hard for them to understand why someone else wouldn't do that. Because they're like, I've been putting in my time to be the kind of person that everyone is supposed to be. Why are you not doing that also? Yeah. And further, how dare you not want to do that? You know what I mean? It's wild. That is wild. Because I always like kind of look at those people and I was like, yeah, but we're still supposed to, we're spending the same amount of therapy. So it, it, <laughs> Exactly. Uh, there's exactly. always a level playing field when, you know, when I'm in Diane's well, office and when you're in the gym. <laughs> Okay. I'd rather spend my $25 a, uh, well that's how much my copay $25 so. <laughs> shout out to Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, <laughs> but like you could pay that in a gym membership and get your body kind of okay or I could spend that on like trying to develop myself as a better person yeah. or a person that I like from the inside out yeah. you're which training. has a lot more longevity I feel like yes. yeah. yeah. well and is the root of you know what I mean like again if I tomorrow somehow woke up like you know x pounds lighter mm-hmm. You're, you still have, like, the, you still have your trauma, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. still have the things in your life that, like, bother you and, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, and you're not going to just, pe- I think people, again, assume that being a thin person is being a better person, that, you know, you're a healthy person, and I think they extend that to be mental health. Like, if I just lose 10 pounds, like, I'm going to feel better. Yeah. If I just can fit into that next dress size, like, I'm going to feel better. And then you do, and you don't. Like, yeah. You do, like, I have been smaller. Like, you know, and it was because I was sick. Like, I was really ill for a long time and couldn't eat any food. Like, literally, I think maybe mm-hmm. you probably remember, like, yeah. I couldn't eat meat. I couldn't eat dairy. I could bear, I couldn't eat any sugar, no oil, nothing. Or my body would have this horribly painful reaction. And I literally, like, there were, like, weeks where I was drinking, like, naked smoothies, like, as meals. Because that was the only thing that I could have that would, like, not like, inflame my, you know, internal organs and, like, put me in the hospital. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, the answer to when that happened was go to the ER, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, in and out of the hospital all that year, and I got, like, much smaller, and people were very, like, oh, like, what are you doing? And I'm, like, "Mm, slowly starving. Yeah, (laughs) just dying. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry about me. In a cute way. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, but at the same time, like, you know, all of that happened, and for a lot of people, kind of the if-then correlation is like oh well you know no matter how you did it you lost a bunch of weight and so now you should be happy and I was like no I'm miserable like one I'm physically not well like I don't feel good I can't eat I can't go out with my friends like Mm -hmm. you know I can't enjoy things that I enjoy and two like just losing weight has done nothing to repair all the like mental shit I've got going on so yeah now I'm just thinner and sad like you just (laughs) adopt a new set of, of problems yeah yeah it's like it's crazy but yeah like I mean even and again like this is still within the first like 10 minutes of the first episode of this show yeah and again I'm like oh my god like I had to watch it twice because the first time I was just like crying the entire time and then the second time I was like oh okay there's actually jokes in here (laughs) yeah she does play it off really cool she's like I hope she's okay she's like I hope she's okay okay. and I was like Oh, yeah. Humor is the perfect shield for most things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then that, that like, after that scene, like, after it cut to something else, I was like, oh, well, now yeah. I, feel, I feel very unsettled right now. Yeah. Because uh, I'm like, God, I hope I've never 
said something like that to someone, like, without thinking. Um, yeah. I, I hope mean, not. Probably. Let's just be human I about mean, it, realistically, probably. probably but, uh, like, you know, if you're aware of it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all you can do going forward. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. Unlearning. I mean, I can't think of anything mom. if that helps you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, that does make me feel a little better. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, unlearning is the hardest thing that adult, adults are tasked with. Yeah. Unlearning. For real. For real. Yeah. I mean, this, this is just kind another of a, thing. And I'm like, yeah. you, I'm like you, can, you never stop. And I hope that people, and especially podcast people, are, like, I think innately curious. That's why. Oh, yeah. Up. It's, like, the purpose. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, I think, like, unlearning is probably a really good theme mm-hmm. for this episode. Because mm-hmm. it's kind of, the entire time, it's, because it's, again, like, the first episode of the series, so you're kind of setting up, like, What's Annie about? Yeah. What's she going to go through kind of yeah, and, for and, this series? Mm-hmm. And she has to herself unlearn, you know, like, unlearn caring about, you know, if I, like, you know, there's the whole, the, the red dress that she wears, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Like, her friend gets that red dress, and she's like, oh, you should wear this perfect for you. And she's like, no, 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 I could never, you know. It's too bright. It calls too much attention. It's too bright. Yeah. It's not, you know, like, it's not cut specifically in a way that's going to hide her stomach. You know what I mean? It's just a dress. It's a little, like... Mm-hmm. Bit and flare, cutesy, a line summer dress. Yeah, and she's like, no. She immediately, even without it, almost like without thinking about it, is like, no, 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 that's yeah. not for me. And then the interesting part is yeah. when she justifies, and then she's just like rattles off these reasons why she can't do it. And it's like, yeah. well, your initial reaction was no, and like, yeah. what's the gut response? Well, uh, and again, that's a very real thing. Like mm-hmm. you're kind of taught for a lot of your life that, like, through you know, not specifically, no one like sits you down, but like, just through what you get through media and like the way other meat like you know movies and things like portray fat people and like how they should act and what they deserve like you learn a lot of like that's not for me kind mm-hmm. of behavior you know what I mean like that dress is cute but it's not for me like you know that relationship's cute but that's not for me you know yeah. and that job is real cute but that's not for me and you get that immediate kind of reaction to things where you say no before you even consider if you should try yeah and I think that a lot of this and specifically in the capsule of this one episode it's Annie unlearning, like, you know, she's like, no, I can try that dress, you know what I mean, like, I can put that on, like, I'm cute, and, like, yeah. all these things, and that's kind of the, the, her, that's her trajectory for the rest of the series, is her kind of, like, seeing all these things that she had previously learned weren't for her or for fat people, Yeah. and she, un, she goes through the process of, like, unlearning all of those things and learning how to say, like, well, no, like, if I want it, then I can have it, Yeah. you know what I mean, like, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest thing for me that I feel like more people should be actively trying to unlearn is that it's okay to try and it's even more okay to fail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think if you stop trying, most people around high school, because you found your thing or mm-hmm. the thing that works for you, uh, or actually it's probably much earlier than that. And most, yeah. It's probably actually much earlier than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably around kindergarten. Actually. Oh. <laughs> that I think so much, much earlier. Much, much earlier. <laughs> because you find your group. Usually, yeah, 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 yeah. Like for me, like we went to like a bunch of different schools, so like I was on the new kid a lot. Uh, so like I don't think my my thing really settled because I had to keep trying. Yeah, <laughs> I was like yeah. none of these people know me, and they don't think I'm funny, they don't like want to hang out with me. So I'm going to befriend all of you. <laughs> I'm gonna make you. By the time I'm out of this school the next year. Once again, I'm not gonna say that Tessa kidnaps people, but <laughs> it a little bit sounds like you hey. kidnapping friends. <laughs> Kidnapping. JK, I'm sure they were all perfectly happy to be there. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely love My it. birthday parties were lit. I'm just saying. You know what, though? Kidnapped or not, I do believe that. <laughs> it doesn't really matter how they got to the party. I do believe you had a lit birthday party as, like, a seven-year-old. I bet there were, like, you know, multiple cakes, a pony. There was definitely multiple cakes. <laughs> multiple cakes on cakes. Like, oh, it was so good. I wish you guys had been there. <laughs> I picture it ending with you watching, or sorry, making everyone watch Mission Impossible. 1,000 uh, percent probably. Yeah. Mission yeah. Impossible. Speed. Like when you started to do sleepover birthday parties, I bet they had a lot of mm-hmm. piano. Oh, it was like a lot of speed. <laughs> speed. Yeah, I definitely made a lot of people watch Speed with me. Remember in college when we watched Constantine, like, every, every day? day? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm like such a we huge fan like of piano. We had two or three movies, movies that we would watch over and over and over again. Yes. <laughs> Because the tea was one. And looking back on them, it was like the Rock worst collection. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> you can get in. If, if you, you can get, get in. in. <laughs> <laughs> I say that all the time and nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm like, well, where's Tessa then? <laughs> Clearly this joke's not for you. <laughs> Episode one, we're also introduced to um, Annie's boyfriend. <laughs> Boyfriend's a or word, isn't it? <laughs> Annie's fuckboy, I guess. He was Annie's a he, fucking yeah. human puppy who follows her around. Like he was a fuckboy. I was like, is he written to be a puppy? Like, I, was that what? I wonder if that's what she had in mind. Uh, I feel like he's just him. written again. And I know that this is where it kind of branches out more from just fat women experience to just women experience. Mm-hmm. I know that everyone has dated this guy. I've dated this guy. He's like 40. Everybody's Isn't he? How does he have a 15 year old kid? I was like, how old are you? And, yeah, to yeah. be doing this, having pencil fights in your, uh, what is a pencil fight? I was unclear. I didn't exactly. find it. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, is this something I should do? No, like, it's not. <laughs> I was just, I, I was just as shocked as she was to find out that he had not just a child, oh. but a Girl, practically an adult child um, that you just failed to mention. That also has happened to me. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But I think this has less to do with me. I think it has less to do with me being like, I don't think me being fat had anything to do with it. I think it was more to do with dudes are trash. Like this guy, it was, you know, it was a long time ago. It was during my, my Hoenn days before I met my boyfriend. <laughs> and uh, some dude that I met on an app, like, you know, it was just hanging out at his house a few times. And I had, I didn't hang out with this guy enough to say that we, like, had a relationship at all. Like, at, in any stretch of the imagination, we were definitely just, like, fooling around. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I had been at his house once or twice. Long enough that, oh, I have a son should have come up well, at some point. There's a photo of a kid somewhere. Well, maybe or... maybe during the first portion of the first, you know, get-together when, oh, what, you have any siblings? No, but I have a son. Is an appropriate <laughs> an answer to that question. Mm. No, and it didn't Did come just up. fall silent? <laughs> That's what I would have done. What happened was I was in the kitchen getting, like, a glass of water, and I saw, like, art, like children's art on the fridge, and I was like, oh, did your one of your nephews make this? Like, that's really cute. And he's super, super cash, just... Oh no, that my son made that and left the kitchen, walked away, and <laughs> and it's a miracle I didn't drop the water like right then. I was like, <laughs> and I think it was that moment where I was like, I need to reevaluate what I'm doing here. Like I need to like, but at least it's like figure a, my a shit child, out. Like a <laughs> child. It was a baby. Yeah, it, it wasn't fifteen. So I took the artwork off the fridge and <laughs> <laughs> I ripped it in half. This <laughs> is child's art. No, I definitely think I was in that apartment for maybe five more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Done for. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, this is a this is a wake up call. If any, I was, young, you I was just a young girl. Yeah. <laughs> Name of the episode. You know when you learn. <laughs> but yeah, Ryan's trash. Um, Ryan is complete and utter trash. And I was like, hey, hey how are you supporting yourself? I. Unclear. And, and is that wealthy? Like, well, he had talking trash. I was just, just so, can we talk about his podcast, Talking Trash? <laughs> talking Trash. <laughs> and when his friends, like, suggest to name it something else, and he, like, loses Listen. it a little bit, he's like, excuse me, no, it's already called Talking Trash. Like, and, and you want to know call that. it an <laughs> island of the mind. <laughs> Which is also dumb. Talking trash is a better name. Exactly. Exactly. For the type of podcast you think talking trash would be about, would be like funny a little bit. I would think but that talking trash is so serious. serious. Like a, a very flamboyant, like gay man talking trash, and trash is the guy who's talking. Yes. That's what I would yes. think. And I'd be like, like into it, time. then I'd find out it was. Like a Wendy Williams. But, yes. Yeah, like a situation yes. like that. Yes. Yes. But no, it's a very, very serious. Podcast about Look into the Burning Man or something yeah. like oh Jesus. Tiring. <laughs> it's just syphilis, syphilis, syphilis. Look, call out. I get it. Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the things I know about Alcatraz. Have you been listening syphilis, to syphilis, talking syphilis. tracks? You seem to know a lot. <laughs> like, you know, I've got a lot of interests. I guess. And one I, of them is I'm learning more about you every day. Prisoners and you think that it's such escaping a jails, <laughs> creating jails, <gasps> things of this nature. <laughs> you know, yeah. if I was ever in a scenario where I'd have to escape something, let's just say I think I could. Okay. So 
surprising no one, yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> like, and then again, I don't hold people against their will. And I will not be held against mine. So, <laughs> just in case, just in case anyone's like, uh, I'm going to show her, I've seen the movie Escape Room, which we should also do on the podcast, because oh, that no. has some females in it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> don't know if they're leads quite yet, but no. there were ladies there. That movie didn't have a lead somehow, you know what I mean? It like, didn't. There were a lot of cool The lead guys. was the escape room, I think. I it was the most that. interesting part of that whole movie was the styling. I was like, I want to turn off the sound and just watch this scenery move around. That's I all. I like, loved it. The next character that we meet is Annie's <laughs> roommate, uh, Lolly, which, whose name I could not capture the entire series. And I was like, who's this Fran? Fran? Oh, I thought her name's Fran. Her name's Fran. Oh, that's her real name. Yeah, uh, her name is Lolly. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't, I feel like they didn't say her name a lot. Jessica so like, cannot get the name straight. I know. Podcast. She yeah. has to follow by the actor's name. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a flaw, guys. We're going to, you know, is this my review? <laughs> <laughs> it's a quarterly, it's a quarterly uh, review. It's awesome. Yeah. Your numbers are down. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's it's going to be by 20%. Oh. I love 20%. Right. I thought right. she was fantastic. Yeah. Because I, I also think, like, she's kind of the, well, she is the perfect counterpart to um, Annie mm-hmm. um, in that she is, like, a fuller-figured woman, but she's just out there getting it. And I was like, yes, nothing yeah. seems to be stopping her. Yeah. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know why that was a thing. Um, I was like, maybe it's just, like, and, like, being, like, a larger woman is very acceptable in, like, black it circles, is colored different. circles. Well, and <laughs> Fran, you know, there's a difference... Edie and Fran's body types, you know what I mean? Like, Fran has a, she's got, like, a, a little more of an hourglass, you know, mm-hmm. figure, you know what I mean? Like, again, like, uh... <laughs> but she does wear very big clothing. For sure. Yeah. yeah. But it, it seems like more of a, like, a Stylistic. choice in terms of style. Yeah. Didn't she have, like, kind of, like, an 80s style? Yeah. yeah like, a I think bit. she wore, like, maybe big shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah. Like, big blazers. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that, like, it was, like, a peach and yellow, like, ensemble she had on. Was yeah. Like a like shirt, a, there was like, like a yellow. jumpsuit situation at one point. Yeah. She's very well styled. Very yeah. well. She's very, she's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think like, she does, there's definitely a difference in like, someone who has like, you know, if you have like, a smaller waist, a lot of, a lot of fat sins are forgiven. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like if you're looking like Ashley Graham, you're, you know, who <laughs> is a plus size with an asterisk? Technically. And again, I don't want to say anything bad about Ashley because like, I love I mean, her. Ashley, like I know her. No, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> no, no, no. We know all her. fat people Friend know each other. I don't know if you know that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a meeting. We go. It's great. <laughs> Good snacks, obviously. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean like Ashley Graham and kind of the. But that's like a her size height. fourteen. That's like Megan okay. McCain. I'm like, yeah, yeah you're not. Well, a and, stick. and size fourteen with like a snatched waist and you know perky boobs. You yeah. know what I mean, like. Not every fat person looks like a very, yeah. very few I can test fat holiday. people look like that. Who test I think holiday, is gorgeous. Exactly. Exactly. No, they're the kind of, um, the two types in my mind that mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, like, I want to see, when when I see Tess Holiday get the kind of exposure and repeated exposure, like, Ashley Graham goes to fucking CBS and people lose their goddamn minds. I'm like, look at her out and about like a yeah. human girl. I'm like, and then oh yeah. Tess is more like, how dare you promote this lifestyle? Oh, like, she's like, on the cover of fucking Cosmopolitan and yeah. threw a party for herself. And like, do you remember she had, there's this little uh, video, this adorable video of her looking like a flawless goddess. Like, she's literally so has great. been crafted by the Lord. Like, mm-hmm. she is so perfect. And she's like eating this cake that has her her cover on it, like any other person who throws a release party would do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every other person who releases a book, movie, like first photo, like release, whatever it is, would do this. And it's just this little cute video of her like eating her cake with her face on it. And the internet lost its fucking mind because she has a larger waist. You know what I mean? Right. Because she's like a, she's a, she's a big plus size model. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like people like Ashley Graham, um, I would call them like small fat. Like they're they're on the lower end, you know. They're still in yeah. the teens. If we're going by dress size, yeah, a, a straight size store but that's like might carry the something average for them. Size of a woman. Exactly. So like again, like I understand that you know struggle is relatable. It's relatable, but it's not, but it's not really the same. what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, and I'm just like you can't. It's like with every other. If you take like 
if you're looking at it at a spectrum, you know what I mean? If you've got like Ashley Graham on one end and like Tess Holiday is on the other end, if we're talking about like, you know, plus size models, um, and you would just include Ashley Graham and then you call that work. You say like, oh, we're done now. Like mm -hmm. we're, we're body positive now. We've done it. We're inclusive. Mm -hmm. But you then close the door behind all the girls after her. Mm -hmm. That's not work to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's, that's not enough. Just the same as, you know, if you're going to open up your, you know, if you're going to be casting a movie and you're like, okay, like we're going to be more inclusive in our casting and you're going to include only like more, so like you're going to include like, you know, like people of color, but only like lighter skinned, like yeah. more white, like passing kind of people of color. And then you say, oh, we're done now. Yeah. No, you're not. Like that's not work. Like yeah. that's not that's even not what we meant. That's or, not it at all. Yeah. Like that's you you've done nothing. You've yeah. done literally nothing. I'm a big yeah. fan of YouTube and I watch a lot of YouTubers. Um, and so this is like what's been going on for years now with mm -hmm. like darker skinned women like fighting about with makeup companies yes. about um having color matching. That even, like, it's like why do you think yeah. Fenty is doing so well? It's not that great, but she's included so many people's no coloring. Yeah. I was like, you know, like I, I can relate to uh this in that way and that like things just aren't made for you yeah like exactly. it's just not included and that's just a fact you and are it's not very included clear in this. yeah From and the then it's because you're well, something about yeah. you is less desirable mm -hmm. and like it's a, definitely like a universal kind of anyone who's marginalized in any way and this is like i don't want to i never want to compare like one kind of person to another like kind of person just because yeah. everyone's experiences are i don't want to get into like any kind of fight about it but Fight. In, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I am going to say that, you know, like the emotional experience of being like a fat woman is very much like, like you go through the same range of emotions mm -hmm. of you get very good at walking into a space and knowing immediately if you're welcome there, you know, you just can feel it or like you can tell very quickly, like, you know, women like the fucking tone time you again, like. She doesn't care about Annie's health at all. That's my... You know what I mean? Oh. She doesn't care about Annie at all. And you can tell immediately when someone's talking to you. Like, are you being genuine with me? Or is this some backhanded, like, underground? Because, again, like, fat women are still women. Like, I know all about sarcasm and backhanded compliments. Yeah. And, like, you know, bless your heart and all that shit. Like, I, I see you. Mm -hmm. You know? So if people are out here like, oh, you know, you have such a pretty face. Yeah, I mean, true. Obviously. But. And the rest. Yeah. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, everybody knows shit. when they're not really being spoken to in when you something about your body or your life is not, you know, mainstream. Yeah. But I also, I just, like, I have such a hard time with, like, because I listen to, like, a, a very wide variety of, like, podcasts and YouTubers and people who are, who think it's their place to shame someone. That's, like, I think why I had such a, like, yeah. Tanya, like I just got instantly yeah. angry and then I rewound it and I was like, I must have missed something. Yeah. Uh, because people people don't act that way, but like that you think that it's your place to shame someone about their body so that they are then motivated to, yeah, quote unquote, fix themselves yes. in order to fit the standard that you put upon and them. And under like, the guise of I'm worried about you, it's kind of what help. the kicker is. It's your all help. it like, always comes nothing. down to like, well, I'm just worried about you. You're I'm worried about your health. I'm like, well, worry about your fucking self. Like yeah. binge drinking every like you know Friday night and. <laughs> What did you eat today? Like a Starbucks yeah. latte and five almonds? Like, mm -hmm. we're eat it's very, and again, it's very disingenuous. Mm -hmm. And who are you to talk to me about my fucking health? Are you a doctor? Are you yeah. my doctor specifically? Yeah. Like, no. It's like, <laughs> what medical program did you graduate from? Yeah. Did you spend any time, anything outside of like your yeah. blogs, uh, yeah. doing research on how to. It's just, it's, yeah, but it is like wild the, the stuff that people like feel that they can. Is there a place to comment on? Yeah. Or is there a place to, like, take an issue with? Like, again, talking about Tess Holiday, like, who can, like, if she wants to eat five fucking cakes, do it. Let her eat, like, that's her life. Like, yeah. let her eat get five cakes. here because I am impressed. <laughs> Anybody who can eat. I think everything Tess Holiday does is great. I am uh, in love with her. And I'm yes. in love with her and I love that she's, yeah, and her kids. Um, and I was like, what a great role model yeah. she is for her kids and for, like, other kids. And I love that she's so open about mm -hmm. every facet of her life like you know she talks about like she's just very open about the fact that she's like my life has not been easy like mm -hmm. 
I, I know she had like uh like one of her parents was emotionally abusive. Yeah. Um she grew up I think not with a lot of money and yeah. just and you know, she's just like she's just such a wonderful like I just imagine she's like a fucking blast to hang out with. Yeah. Like, I just imagine that she is super loving and like hilarious and mm-hmm. just like oh and like stunning like to look at. Yeah. Right? I love that shit. Oh, poor man. Did, wait, did we talk about her friend at all? We did talk about how we love her style, and we talked about how you don't know her name. <laughs> 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 well, and just that Fran. she's kind of the the other. She's I feel like she's kind of who who Annie is on the road to being. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like she's the mm-hmm. one. Like Fran is kind of the the example of like what what it can be like when you kind of let go of. Yeah. All the shit that society puts on you. Yeah. I'm going to be honest, yeah. I didn't get when she was breaking up with her girlfriend and why she was so mad. Uh, I mean, I actually, she did cut her hair, but also she... <laughs> but, she said, her to you? but she said it looked really good. It did yeah. look really good. So, so Sarah, <laughs> I mean, you know, like, why exactly are you mad that a professional stylist gave you a better haircut? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you didn't and ask it for didn't it. waste any of your time because you're busy. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> I can get my hair done, honestly. What? I said if I could get my hair done when I was asleep, that'd be great. I'd save so much time. Oh. You would, would, you, would you let Andrew do it, though? No, I'd let <laughs> my hairstylist Maggie do it. <laughs> Shout out to Maggie. My hairstylist, she's the best. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there are a little, you know, I mean, the show's great, but it's not perfect. You know, there yeah, are I'm some... excited for the next season. There are some character development, you know, issues. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and my I, only worry is that like they're gonna let her character fall away, fall away, and I'm like I think yeah. she's also kind of you're worried about Fran falling away. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't really set her up to have any storyline aside from just she's being a token really, side character. Yeah. But she, yeah, yeah, she really only exists inside the home that they both share. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I, and maybe this is giving the show too much credit, but you know, the same kind of thing happens with, and now I'm gonna not remember his name, her coworker. Oh, who's black, also, right? Yeah, who's also black, who's, like, kind of her cheerleader at work, who's always, yeah. like, you know, hey, like, you know, you can do it, you know, good mm-hmm. job, you should ask for that, you should pitch that, like, you should keep going, you should always be trying, like, he's kind of her main, he's her work husband, you know what I mean, he's yeah. her source of support at work, but there's a lot of moments, especially as the series goes on, where we start to kind of see Annie's flaws, and one is that she's a selfish person, like, she's always kind of thinking about herself, like, again, in my favorite episode of the series which if you don't I don't understand why you wouldn't just want to watch this series because again it is only like three hours like, yeah end to end like it's not you're not doing anything you're it, it, like you know <laughs> <laughs> pretend it's like you know the latest no, adventure you, I just do it. no I know yeah they're, they're no I'm saying anything. you know just pretend it's like a, a Marvel movie and yeah. just you know make it make it happen <laughs> and this is better because you can pause and go get snacks so like, yeah I mean but my favorite episode is episode four where they go to the pool party and there's a moment where she's talking to her boss. They're in like a pitch meeting, and her boss is like uh, saying, "Oh, we have a new kind of compulsory exercise program at work, so that we qualify for your health care." Which again is a fucking thing that's happened to that's me. That's real. That's I was real. Like, what a straight. Like, it's they very can make real. You work out. Uh, I don't know if they can make you work out. They, I don't know if they can make you work out. That's more of an employer thing. But an insurance company can for sure come in send people in to take your BMI and then charge you more for insurance. Because that's happened to me, for sure. Yeah, that's real. Even though, totally ignoring that BMI is a bullshit statistic yeah. when you're talking about a specific person. It's been un- it's been disproven as an accurate way to measure, like, healthy, like, fat, like, mm-hmm. whatever. It, over and over and over and over again. And yet, they still do this shit because, like, it, because society hates fat people. <laughs> like, mostly. <laughs> I mean, I know about, like, big companies that um, they'll give you, like, 500 bucks a year, but you have to spend it on, like, mm-hmm. yoga classes, or you can yeah. spend it on an iPhone, like, I, an Apple Watch, because that mm-hmm. tracks your shit and stuff, but that's, like, assuming that that's what everyone wants. Yeah. You know? It's, well, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, what if my side hustle is, like, plus size modeling? Well, and, well, and again, like, maybe you should spend it on your mental health, if that's what you want. <laughs> well, well, that's exactly. Right. Maybe I, you honestly, should be allowed to spend it on... Yeah. What well, makes them happy is feel that anybody who's exactly. job or insurance yeah. allows them the capacity to get in, 
to see a counselor should be seeing a counselor. Oh, for sure. If you have an insurance policy, for sure, and it can be expensive, so as I say, if you have the ability, you should be. It. If you can make it worth a counselor, you should do it. Even if it's once, once a month, percent. a monthly check-in, like yeah. It, and I feel like even if you don't like think you need, like I'm not in therapy, but it's specifically because I cannot afford to do it. But if I could, I'm gonna oh give a little. God. I'm gonna give a little shout out. Um, the Northwestern Institute for Family. Um, they, you can go for 15 bucks. Ooh. Yeah. So like our insurance didn't cover it. Um, can you go like without any insurance? Like it's just $15. Yeah. I think it's a sliding scale, but I think yeah. my husband pays $15. Um, but yeah, our, we have insurance and it's not covered. Mm-hmm. And I think they said if it was covered, it would have been like $45 and we're like, Oh, $45 opposed to one fifty. That's great. Yeah. And then yeah. we found this place. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Let me find out the That's a really good resource. Yeah. And a lot of therapists will do a sliding scale. Like if, if for some reason you don't have insurance but are still interested in seeking help, a mm-hmm. lot of therapists will do a sliding scale for you. Yeah. Um not sure that'll be as low as fifteen or fourteen. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but uh you know. that's still good information to have. Because yeah. it is like daunting to think about. Mm-hmm. Well, and especially like I mean, my personal experience with this health thing, really quickly before we get back to like the original threat was um like I was working for a school that wasn't it wasn't an independent school it was like you know part of a network so maybe it's because it was with a larger technically a larger company Mm -hmm. but they did send you had like a wellness check once a year and they would send in like you know nurses or whoever and just do um like blood breath like very basic stuff they take like height weight bmi like blood pressure do like an iron deficiency test and then have you sign an affidavit if you smoked or not. Like you would have to like disclose if you were a smoker, which again, I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, like I'd be lying. I'm sorry. Like, like I would lie. Like, like, I do wonder why people ever, ever, ever I, answer like, that. I, mean, I, would, I would never be smoking, but I would also be like, let me business. Yeah. But, and I can tell you, like, and I worked for this school for a very long time. So I did this a lot. And they, it was not accurate. Like I had, like, I think in the five years that I would get this done, I had five different heights taken for me. (laughs) Like it was very not like, again, not accurate. And then they would just kind of say like, okay, like if you fall out of this range of BMI, like you need to pay X amount of dollars more on your insurance. And then there are things you can do to like take that number back down. Like they would say, oh, you could go see a nutritionist or you can like, prove that you are on like a health plan or something like that. But again, none of this information is coming from a doctor, my doctor. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Like it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And there's no reciprocal. What if you're under BMI? What about that? What if you're wildly over thin? Yeah. No one's going to step in. Things, or it could be a health risk. Like, no one's going to step risky, in. Like give a to... risky hobby. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or a NASCAR racer as your side hustle. Yeah. Uh, like, if you're, like, okay, if you're a NASCAR driver, that, that should be your main hustle. <laughs> that and we get paid to go fast. This isn't the movie. I was going to say, I don't know. Have we seen Fast and Furious? I feel like. They made no money. money. <laughs> I didn't see one exchange of cash in six It was all for the love of the movies. game, you know? I live my life one quarter mile at a time. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the rush. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're all family um, here. Sidebar, are we going to go see that new um, Fast and Furious? The Hobbs? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, my <laughs> God, yes. I just watched the trailer sometimes. I was going to say, I think I've been more um, excited for The something. listeners definitely don't know this, but uh, Tessa and I are Fast and Furious, like, stands. Like, uh, we've seen pretty much every single movie yes. together. I prefer to see them on opening day. Absolutely. On the big one spoiler. One spoiler. intended, yes. you know? Big as possible. And I'm just going to find a way to make an SFL episode out of it. Even though there are two women. There are ladies. <laughs> Annie's friend at work, who, again, I should probably just sit and look it up, his name, I don't know. Um, there's this moment where they're all in a meeting. She's like, you know, let me pitch something. Uh, they introduce that new kind of forced fun exercise activity. And her friend mentions, oh, yeah, I just got, like, a new bike for my my kid. Like, you know, and the, the boss is like, no, no kids. And he says some, like, really nasty stuff about, like, children are a cancer or something. Like, some horrible, mm-hmm. just flippant, I'm a horrible person shit. And then next scene, Annie comes over to him at his desk. He's clearly looking, like, distraught and sad. Like, he's, you know, moping at his desk because 
his loss just, you know, compared his children to a plague or whatever the yeah. original reference was. And she goes, oh, like, you know, boss, he hates me now, blah, blah, blah. And her friend, like, references it. He's like, yeah, well, you know, he just compared my living, breathing children to roadkill. So, yeah, he kind of hates all of us right now. And she yeah. blows right past that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they do set up a storyline for that character. And then his wife is, like, somewhat frustrated in their relationship. Exactly. He has to leave her later yeah. in the series. He's like, I gotta go. And she's like, why? You know? Mm-hmm. So I feel like they, maybe it's a vehicle of the story to be like, okay, like, we're not seeing a lot about these characters because we're kind of following Annie's point of view. And she is not at the point in her development where she cares a lot about. She yeah. doesn't notice that she's not giving a lot to other people mm-hmm. in, in her relationships. Um, I think it's a shame and maybe not so much of a coincidence that all of those characters are black. Yes. You know, I did. like, again, I that's mean, another one of the issues. I think that, that, and I was like, just because she's British doesn't yeah. make her not black. Yeah. And you know, she has that <laughs> fling with uh, Fran's brother, Lamar, who I was like, bring back Lamar. Yeah, I was like, why are we making this a character? Why is Ryan, why do I even see his face ever again when Lamar exists? I don't understand. I was disappointed. I was like, why are they sending him away? Yeah. Yeah, but I think, so I think that that's more like, you know, it's, it remains a bit of carelessness in in casting and maybe a bit in the the writer's room, which is like a little surprising, but also not surprising at all. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Something to work on. You don't want to, you don't want to see it, like you hate to see it, (laughs) but you you understand yeah. how you see it you know yeah I mean? and I'm like yeah. almost willing to, not I'm not forgiving it but I'm almost willing to forgive it in service of the story that they're trying to get across exactly yeah. and that and that every story isn't meant for every person but yeah. like if we're correcting things let's correct more things it's you can um, definitely really and again like I love this series mm-hmm. I love the you know the story I love the representation I love the myriad of moments of like that's me on the screen yeah. you know like. I love all of that, and I watch it over and over again. And again, like like I said, I love the styling and the shooting, but I think you can love something and still recognize that it has some yeah. flaws. And mm-hmm. one of the flaws here is that character development kind of doesn't hold up, and mm-hmm. there are a lot of characters of color who are kind of brushed to the side in service of whatever Annie's interested in yeah. at the time. Yeah. You know? And which is a shame, because Fran's a great character. Like, I would love to see more about her and yeah. her relationship, and again... In my favorite episode, in the pool party, she meets that that woman, that bomb woman who's like running the pool party, and I just want to see their relationship. Yeah, for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Because so I know we're like supposed to be talking about episode one, but I do love episode four so much. Pool when she pool goes party. to the pool party. I do so like that specifically one. in that episode, well, one I love it because um, Samantha Irby, local author and amazing person, wrote it, and you could tell mm-hmm. like immediately just like her tone and like again if, if you guys haven't read any of her like blog entries or any of her books like do yourself a favor and do it immediately like it's she's amazing I love her writing so much um but she wrote this episode and I feel like I was like a little more in touch with it because she's also a fat woman so she's like knows what's up you know what I mean um but there's this there's a scene where they go to this like fat girl pool party which is a real thing like, it has been a real thing yeah, it's been, like, a real thing for a while. Like, these small little just, like, get-together kind of, like, community-building things. I yeah. have never been to one because I'm not quite in the right age bracket for it to be, like... Like, I kind of... There was a... a par- I've, I've done some reading. Apparently, there was a big wave of them, like, in the thousands. Like, you know what I mean? They bring it back. Exactly. So they do have them. Like, mm-hmm. Golden Confidence has a pool party every year in Atlanta. Golden Confidence? She's a blogger. Um, she's like a fat activist, like model blogger, but she does one every uh, every summer, I think, in Atlanta. And there's something. There's one called Swim Thick, which is I don't remember where that one is, but that, that one name. happens every year. I know it's a great cool. name. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great name. I would go to that one. Yeah, but it's essentially just like you know, again, like a community building, like you know, a, a it's a a realm where when you're fat, like it's it's the the biggest. This is not for you. You know what I mean? The biggest one, like the most obvious one. Mm. You're not, you're, you're not meant to be in a bathing suit. And if you are, you have to wear one of those like grandma skirts. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like you don't get to wear a cute bathing suit. You definitely don't get to like dress up. You for sure don't get to dance or actually swim. Like you should definitely be wearing like a a caftan cover up. Not that there's (laughs) anything wrong with that if that's your jam, but like, I like a bikini, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so this scene, there's just this like, and this is where I feel like we really 
the reason it like really shines is because like Amy Bryant, she is overweight like as a person, but as a fat person, she's still pretty small. So this is this the pool party scene is really where you get like this explosion of just all these different kinds of women, mm -hmm. like all the body types, like all the way through. And like they're wearing all these gorgeous swimsuits and they're just like partying and dancing and there's no shyness from the camera's point of view. No one is trying to be like blocked to look thinner or like, oh, let's like pan away. It's like, thighs out like you know skies out thighs out mm -hmm. like stomachs everywhere it's fantastic and it's just like very like I watch that scene just sometimes that scene mm -hmm. like just by itself just because I'm like I, need, I just need you know like a little refresher I just need to like breathe it in a little bit I also I, I did really like episode four mm -hmm. but I also really liked it because it does really expose Annie as a character that we both like mm -hmm. and who's you know whose view or like we're living a story through her view, but it's also, like, giving me an opportunity to dislike her. Yeah. Um, which, to me, makes her a little bit more human. Yeah. Because, uh, like, you know, the first three episodes were very much on her side. Like, things things that are happening to her are horrible. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. But this one, I was like, no, you're kind of being a dick this whole episode. And I really liked that she was being a dick. Yeah. Um, because it made her fully a human and not a victim. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's a real person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. And I just love, like, I don't know, just, like, the visual of that episode is stunning. I wish that Hulu would release a line of the swimsuit merch because I don't know if you guys know that a lot of it was handmade by their, uh, their custom, it? yeah, their custom made because nobody makes, like, a size 32 fucking bikini. Like, even, and this is, again, like, clothes are a big thing in the, you know, fat community and, like, body positivity movement. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's, it's an easy thing to point to because it's like the least common denominator of like, okay, this is something we can all talk about. Yeah. It's definitely not the most important issue. Like there is like a fat wage gap that like exists and like fat people don't get good health care and like are less likely to, you know, be approved for loans and apartments and things like that. Like that's more important, but this is like the easy way in yeah. is talking about the availability of clothes and the types of clothes that are available to fat people. So like even, um, swimsuit like lines that are for extended sizes like okay like gabby fresh is mm -hmm. an amazing like she makes fat clothes like she she and nicolette mason do um creme which is a higher end like fun you know yeah. very cute like fat uh extended sizes line and every year she does a campaign with swimsuits for all where she releases extended sizes like adorable swimsuits but even that campaign from a person who is clearly committed to providing nice things for fat people and providing like fashionable stylish things for fat people even that only goes up to like a size 24 which if you're small sounds huge but is not the like it should just be available to everyone you mm -hmm. know what I mean and I know that that has nothing to do with I'm sure that that restriction has not a lot to do with Gabby herself and more to do with production and cost and like rules that come with you know like when you're dealing with a larger company they're like okay well we'll do this thing but we're only going to do it to this size like that kind of thing but um it's just you know even within the progress that is made mm -hmm. there's still restrictions and yeah. so it was just gorgeous to see kind of a kind of a little bubble of no restrictions you know what i mean yeah. like in this little world of this pool party everybody gets to wear whatever they want you know what I mean? Like, everybody gets to have the bikini. Everybody gets to have the cute patterns. If you want to be covered up, you get to be covered up, but you're still, you know, you get to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, like, that's the goal, you know? Like, yeah. That's how you want to feel. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, just, this always just makes me sad, though. Like, yeah. The things that you don't realize are happening until you think. Exactly, yeah. And I was like, since 24, I'm like, you know, I mean, if you can do 24, <laughs> why can't you do exactly 20? Why can't you? Like, what's the difference? Um, really? That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't old enough to go to these pool parties in the thousands, but I am old enough to remember when Lane Bryant was not cool and it was hard. Like, well, I remember Lane Bryant. <laughs> Lane Bryant is still around and they yeah. are much cooler now, but 
you know, was, yeah. seven, ten years ago, Still it was a rough time. A lot of wide leg, like, a like lot you just talk show hosts from the 90s. Uh-huh, yeah, and a lot of, like, my rayon tops, yeah, and, totes. like, a lot of bedazzling on the ass of your <laughs> jeans, like, a lot of applique, <laughs> like, it's a lot. I just remember, like, sets. Yeah. Like, everything was a set, like, uh-huh. don't get crazy. I'm mm-hmm. gonna give you this shirt that goes exactly with this pants. Yep. Like, yep. so, no, no, no. And all of it is very it's much cut. Yeah, no, we got you. Uh, yeah. Gray on gray? Yes. We got you. Gray on slightly darker gray? <laughs> Get wild. <laughs> and all of it cut very, like, loose. You know what I mean? The goal being, here's some clothes that's, that's going to hide your body. Fabric. Which is insane, because I'm like, you think people can't tell I'm fucking fat? And it's like a large sweatshirt. Like, girl, I'm here. Like, you can't not see me. So that is just so It's wild to me. To me. Like, <laughs> most people rather have something that fits their body. Yeah. Fat people should also be able to do whatever the fuck they want. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's not like my fat money is less spendable than fucking thin money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The money I'm paying for, like, if I'm giving them a company money, it does not matter where it came from. You still get the money. So just make me the skirt. Yeah. And I will buy it. Yeah. (laughs) Oh. But so yeah, so circle back. Seems like straight, yeah. strong female lead should also open up like a bespoke tailor that only makes skirts. Yeah, I think that's where we're that out into the universe now. That Don't sounds good. Copyright it because that's how you copyright things. <laughs> you just say it out loud. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she had to say it three times. <laughs> Ooh, copyright, copyright, copyright. <laughs> Got you. Said it before you. You're so slow. <laughs> <laughs> is is Candyman gonna pop out somewhere? Like, what's going on? <laughs> He can't come to my black home. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Joanne the Scammer so much. <laughs> Do you guys uh, follow Joanne the Scammer? Yes. She's so funny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that door thing so badly. Oh my god. Oh, so yeah. Awesome. Welcome to my Caucasian home. <laughs> I thought that was funny, but I was like, it hits different coming from a white person, Caucasian so home. I can't. <laughs> I don't think people will get it. I think we have to put it inside. So, like, people know that I'm joking, as opposed to outside where people think I'm, you know, fucking a racist. This is why I make tens of dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The big bucks. Ooh. Is it, is it nice up there on the top? It's, is it? it's cold, actually. It's <laughs> cold and lovely. Oh. <laughs> you can come slum it, slum it down here with us anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh. So, anything else you want to talk about with the sh- with about Shrill? Um, we talked about hmm. Amy. We talked about the episode. Any other characters? Oh, her boss. Oh yeah, we touched on her, her bosses. I mean, like just it, yeah. The theme is just like all these people treat her like garbage. Mm-hmm. Ryan's garbage. Her boss is garbage. Her parents. Her parents are Ooh. interesting. They're an interesting. Like thing. everything my mom said, like hurt. I was like, oh. yeah. Well, the. The, fu- the meals that she makes her buy. What are they pancakes? The, like, thin menu. That's what I'm talking about. They're like, pancakes. And I was like, I don't know. It's probably some, like, weird, like, this, like a, you know, this is all the nutrients you need for a day oh. kind of thing. And again, like, of course they wouldn't be tasteful or flavored or, mm. you know, appetizing to look at. Like, yeah. I forget what Fran, Fran calls them something hilarious and I don't remember what it is, but she, like, she's like, that looks like. She's like mad about it. Yeah, she's like pissed. Yeah, she's like, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Well, and then yeah, her mom. Be, and then her mom like throws the same kind of toned Tanya stuff back at her, where she's like, "Well, I'm just trying to help both of us be a little more healthy." Like, oh, and she's like, "Are you eating the almonds?" Yeah, six almonds. The almonds. <laughs> yeah, like, eight, it's not even a serving of almonds. But <laughs> a serving of almonds, according to the wrapper thing, is twelve. Yeah, like I eat six almonds and I'm still full. It feels like I ate 12 almonds. <laughs> but again, that is the kind of stuff, like, if you look at, um, this reminded me a lot of, like, Jenny Craig and, like, mm-hmm. Weight Watchers. Oh, yeah. I remember, like, Ooh, Slim man. Fast Diets and, like, Uh-huh. What? Yeah. Slim Fast, like, um, again, in episode four, I'm great. Like, like <laughs> she references Special K. Yeah. Where, like, you're supposed to eat a bowl of Special K instead of food. And she talks about, like, being given this you know, objectively less appetizing, less attractive food mm-hmm. to eat because she's the one who needs to be fixed and the rest of the family gets to eat, like, dinner together. Yeah. Like, a real made homemade dinner and everyone has the same plate. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, like, 
was like, oh shit. <laughs> right? Oh man. <laughs> that's real too. Like that's yeah. a really that's a really hard one. And again, like with like the mental issues, and I was like, just even if you lost the weight, when do you change your mindset? That's um, I mean, that's real. Like internalized fat phobia is everybody it's in everybody but it's also very much in people who were formerly fat mm -hmm. like people who think that that's losing, a weird guy on the bike yeah that's yeah. him you know what mm -hmm. i mean like that's that guy like i have a lot of aunts and cousins who are all think that they're you know body positive mm -hmm. to you know to the end of the body earth, positive but, to like a size yeah well body positive in the way that they're like i should be respected for being like i should be able to be they're, they're like surface level body positive. They're body positive in the way that like, I shouldn't be looked down on for being a bigger size as long as I'm striving to the goal of being a smaller size. You know what I mean? Like it's very, it's again, this is the kind of stuff you learn being fat that you can very quickly tell if someone really cares about um, equality and like body equality and body diversity. And if they really just want, you know, an excuse to post like thirst trap pictures and not feel bad about it. Like, which again, I'm like totally pro, mm -hmm. pro ho. Like, please put up your pictures. Like, yeah. I'll like them all day. But you know, um, a lot of people in that situation who have kind of gone from okay, like I was a certain size and now I'm not that size anymore. Mm -hmm. They kind of hang their hat on, well, I was fat, so like I'm body positive. But at the same time, you're very like violent in your words towards people who remain fat for whatever reason mm -hmm. like whether they just are okay with it or medical or whatever it is like yeah. they're very like well you should be healthy like I did it so you can do it okay yeah. great we're different people <laughs> exactly <And I'm> like, <laughs> it turns what? out we're all unique so <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like my impression of body positivity was has always just been that encouraging people to be okay with how they look now striving for nothing yeah isn't that what it is? Well, body positivity originally is like a fat movement of like we deserve to be treated the same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. So more talking about like, you know, um, fat people are like less less likely to be promoted at work. You know what I mean? Like less likely to get jobs that they go to interviews for. Like that kind of stuff. And um, that kind of stuff. And then it kind of became through social media, I think it's become more of like, you know, if you have cellulite, that's okay. Like, yeah, okay, that's an important note. Yes, we shouldn't be airbrushing out yeah. everybody's bodies. Like, you're right, like, everyone should be, like, okay with how they look. Like, you're beautiful. Like, Lizzo just had an interview with Charlemagne the God on Breakfast Club, and you know my feelings about that. I love I hope, my, I hope my tone is conveying. I love Charlemagne. <laughs> I know you do. I love him. <laughs> It's one of our greatest divergent love. points. <laughs> I love it. I love how dumb they are sometimes. Uh, it, I for don't. me, it, it like <laughs> it like primes me to listen to dumb arguments and not just get mad and be dismissive. Because that is my go-to. If I don't like what you're saying, I just stop listening or I turn it off. But I'm like, I've programmed myself to listen to like some, particularly him, because I do find him to be funny sometimes. Uh, but to listen more to opinions and points that I disagree with vehemently or just like how are you just getting to this you're like a 40 year old man I mean like, I guess that that's a good that's a good take on it I am not there yet <laughs> <laughs> but he is like he's terrible when it comes to like he's horrible to women. people and just to women in general I feel like he's just well he was rude to Lizzo and I was like she, she was rude to Lizzo very, very no and that's what I was gonna say yeah. like he says you know like well you're the kind of person that you would look you wouldn't look good thin and she's like no I'm She's like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, I would look good no matter what. Like, mm -hmm. I am beautiful. Yeah. No matter what I choose to do or be or what hair I choose to have this day or what makeup I choose to have or not have, like, whatever clothes I do or do not have on my body, like, I am beautiful. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I feel like is, you know, that's a great message. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I feel like that is, that's the core of, like, what people should be looking for, but then it yeah. gets kind of co-opted by, you know, women who outside of the context of their own Instagram posts, no one would consider to be, like, overweight or, like, fat or anything. Like, yeah. nothing outside of just, like, maybe some douchebag on the internet is like, oh, you're fat. Nothing in your life is happening that is, like, 
you don't walk onto an airplane and wonder like, are they going to kick me off because I'm too fat? Which is a thing that happens. <laughs> like that's like real. <laughs> like, yeah. I know so much about airplane like policies and like who you have to buy an extra seat for and like how the like point centimeters like how big an airplane seat is. Mm-hmm. I know so much about that shit because like at any point someone can just come up to you and be like, hey, I know you spent like you know, hundreds of dollars to do what you need to do and you've got somewhere to go, but at the same time, like, we didn't build this plane for your body, so you have to get off. Like, that happens. Yeah, and I'm like, well, why can't we just build plane seats for bodies we know will be boarding the plane? It's not like there's five fat people in the world that are demanding, you know, things made for them. Like, it's a significant portion of the population. Yeah, so in the U.S. I, hello, I, we're in the Midwest. Like, ma'am, like, I don't, like, it's amazing to me when people are, like, surprised. I'm like, you see people like me everywhere. Like, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, so it's crazy. Like, the whole, like, there's a lot to yeah. talk about with, like, the yeah. the validity and, like, the kind of avenues that the whole, like, body positive idea takes yeah but and that's like yeah. one thing that I, like, I don't like about um i don't want to call out specifically charlemagne <laughs> not specifically charlemagne but <laughs> sort of saying it's not specifically charlemagne <laughs> <laughs> but just people who have gone through their own like body image things mm-hmm. that still have that imprint on how uncomfortable they were in their own skin so much to the fact that they went to an extreme measure or something that other people would see as extreme to change something about themselves, then shaming someone else for not going to that same extreme exactly. in order to fit again a standard that's not their own. Like yeah, exactly. And like, like but you don't see any things. parallels with like the things that that he you know is very passionate about in terms of race. And I was like you. You don't see any parallels. You don't to see what how this saying. is the exact like, same. Yes. Yeah. Again, like not not, the not same, historically and not politically, things. but yeah. emotionally on a person to person level, you don't see how this is the same. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, and I was like, I could walk into a room uh, as a black person and be like, this isn't going to go well. Exactly. Or uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm aware that I'm black in every situation I'm ever interacting. And with. it doesn't matter. <laughs> again, to talk ever. about like you know the way people want to, you know, oh, like, hide your, you know, wear this shapewear, hide your stomach, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. There's nothing I'm going to do that's going to hide the fact that I'm fat. Like, and nothing that I want to do. Like, yeah. this is, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. And for you, like, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to, like, you, there's no thing to do to walk into a room and be like, oh, you're not going to see me as yeah. black because that's, that's who race, I am. You know, 400 <laughs> years of history, but we're cool. And yeah. Like, don't ever think about that because yeah. I don't remember. And so maybe you should just Let's just move on. Let's mm-hmm. talk about uh, Alcatraz. <laughs> talking trash. Talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe talking trash has come up so much. It's called a callback. <laughs> it's called a callback, guys. I've been comedying you all this whole time. You're just like <laughs> comedying. <laughs> comedying you. Don't worry about it. I'm an almost trained professional. I've trained. So I am a professional. That's what I'm gonna say. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you have, like comedy doctorate. What's going on? I do have a comedy degree, actually. Oh, it's a certificate, nice. really. It's not a degree. It's a certificate. <laughs> I printed it myself. No. It is an e certificate. <laughs> in my Google Drive. Yes, I did the right now. University of Phoenix version of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nailed <damn> it. <laughs> oh I man. Did, I did do it. So. I do have a real certificate from Second City that's like, you're approved. You've done so much. You've spent so much money. We're going to give you a certificate. Do you show it to people when you go to do your comedy? Like, do they check? Like, (laughs) when you see your papers and you're like, I have my certificate. Yeah, I got it. I got it shrunken down to a passport size so I can just flip it up at people like an FBI badge. I'm approved. (laughs) Every time you make a joke. Step out of the way. Yeah, I'm here. Excuse Excuse me. me. (laughs) Here for the open mic. There's a lot of uh, unauthorized joke tellers in here. I'd like you to step aside for someone who's bonded and insured. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Um, do we want to talk about the SFLs and then rate the, do uh, it. Rate the, the SFLs? Okay. So in Drunk in the League, we grade uh, all of our SFLs based on three things um, whether or not they have their own agency, 
Um, if they are top billed. And thirdly, if they are moving the plow along. Moving the plow along. Intricate to the plow. Well, <laughs> I always forget one. I always do so well. It's usually the... Uh, well, that's not the most important thing, you know. Like, <laughs> it's easy to forget. It is. <laughs> you know? But how do you even know if it's happening? Well, I mean, top build, I think, is an easy knock out of the park for this one. Because mm-hmm. Aidy Bryant kind of sold this whole thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, her being attached to this project, I think, is kind of what gave it a lot of the visibility of that it has. Yeah. And... Uh, I think she's also, like, an executive producer. Like, I want to say that she's in some way involved in, like, not only the acting, but the creation of the show. Yeah, and I really like that this is, um... Because I was first introduced to Amy Bryant as a Mm stand-up, and then I saw her character work on SNL, and now to see her do, like... Like, I would call this a dramedy. Like, it's not, like, it's not a funny. Yeah. yeah. Which was one thing I was a little, I do love, again, I adore the show, but, like, I do wish it was a little more comedy-leaning, because I was, again, because yeah. I came from it um, knowing Lindy West and Sam Irby's writing, so I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to laugh the entire time. Yeah. Little did I know, <laughs> I was actually going to be opening the evening yeah. on my couch. <laughs> That would be like one of my only things that I would love to see in, in season two is that they bring more comedy, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which is, seems like a big opportunity for her friend character, yes. even though it is another trope well, of a friend. But and more comedy that doesn't rely on the only funny person, and I hate to say it because I hate him, Ryan <laughs> is the only person who gets like solid comedy bits. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, like when he's like taking care of the dog after yeah. the shrooms. And I was yeah. like, that was genuinely And like, I feel funny. like that is the only scene that they kept him around for. That's the only reason I feel like they didn't just have a solid breakup yeah. after the pencil thing mm-hmm. is because they're like, oh, we still got to have this, like, yeah. we need this shroom scene to work out and we need to have it be, like, a real reason that he's around still. Because mm-hmm. I was like, there's no reason on the trajectory that Annie's character is on of this, like, self-discovery, let me, like, weed out all the bullshit in my life. Yeah. And, get right for me. There's no reason that she keeps Ryan around. Especially, yeah, since they show no character growth or development for Ryan. Uh, so no. why, again, are you keeping him around? If why? we're not going to show him change at all, no. or even address the fact that Showing he... up to babysit the dog and then fucking up by poisoning the dog with uh, shrooms is not growth. But <laughs> I feel like people try to hang out. Like, oh no, he like he helped out. <laughs> he helped out by sitting in the house. Like, I don't know. That's not helping out. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> anyway. I just couldn't afford wags. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dog sitter just canceled. This is not a hard job. <laughs> but yeah, but I think... You it's know, also Portland, so she definitely could have taken that dog and worked with her. I'm just saying. saying. <laughs> One thousand There were dogs everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as far as... And then what's the first one? Uh, does she have her own agency? Okay. So could she execute a plan? Uh, I'd say, yeah. She like, killed she, it. Everything she wanted to do, I well, think. Well, the whole show is her just yeah. doing what she wants. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's the whole premise is she kind of wakes up and realizes, you know, people are treating her not right. So she yeah. goes around to all the different areas of her life and is like, treat me right. Yeah. You know? I do like that she, like, wakes up to that revelation that she's like, oh, people are talking, like, when she first interaction with her boss and he's yeah. just, like, you know, ignoring her and not giving her the opportunity to write yeah. the stories she wants to write or write at all, seemingly. Yeah. Um, and then she just, like, kind of wakes up to the fact, like, wait, I am in control of my life. I'm the one who decides whether or not, like, I'm worthy of, like, to be in uh, a relationship that is, like, mutually healthy. beneficial yeah. and <laughs> healthy. I'm the one who decides, like, if I'm going to be a writer, the types of uh, yeah. articles I want to write and they're meaning- meaningful for me. I'm good at this. I'm yeah. worthy of um, all of these things. All of yeah. these things. And I'm like, I loved it. Yeah. She definitely has her agency. For sure. And does she move the plot along? Uh, yeah, she's the only thing moving this plot along. Yeah, her deciding, which is like a kind of like the thing it's I don't like about her sword. side yeah. characters. I was like, why are there to be It's a double edged sword because you do love, like, I mean, again, I do love to see the representation of like coming on the back of so many other characters who are the side, like, mm-hmm. Fat friends who like just are like the friend, you know, like the, yeah. the friend at work who's like, you know, just throws in a joke every once in a while who doesn't, you know, she might as well live there for all you know about her life. Mm-hmm. To transition to a show where literally every choice that the plot is makes is made through her her work. Like everything Annie does is what happens in the show. Yeah. That's nice to see, but it also is sad to see like her 
just the abandonment of her friends. Like Yeah. And like part of me was wondering, like, is that coming from like I wonder if originally this was pitched as a movie? Um, and that's why they have all these different writers coming on and why the side characters aren't being used really. Maybe. They kind of pop in and out, but I'm like It kind of has that vibe of again, like because it's only like three hours total, you really could make the case that you could watch it as a movie. As a movie, yeah. You can kind of take it as a Because I think I might even like it better as just one movie. Maybe yeah. One one like like coming of age tale. (laughs) Yeah. Very great at teeth and so many eye rolls. Uh, <laughs> or do you not like that phrase? I don't. I don't. I don't think that there's like one process. I was gonna of say, do you not age. like it because we all just are coming of age constantly all yes. the time? <laughs> and I don't like to say coming this much. Yeah. It makes me uncomfortable. It's rough. It's rough time. <laughs> I got Hillary with that one, so I feel good about myself. <laughs> you guys can't see it, but Hillary is chuckling. <laughs> She's really liking this joke. <laughs> So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Annie, Annie is definitely an SFL. Yeah. She's for sure strong female lead. She is. I loved it. I loved her. Yeah. I'm sad that there's no other SFLs, but hopefully season two we will get some other female. I lead. really hope. Yeah. You know, I really have hopes for Fran, because she really is, like, and I hope her girlfriend sticks around, because I like her, too. I like her that time, too. Yeah. I think she'll be back. She was just mad. Hmm. <laughs> and your looks better. No, the the pool party girlfriend. Oh, the pool party girlfriend. Yeah, she's too cute. Yeah, I love her. I love when she's girl. like, oh yeah, she like, the girl like a uh, friend didn't show up or something because she met someone at a Chase Bank ATM. It was so <laughs> specific. I was like, okay, <laughs> Chase Bank is where the hot girls are. Okay, I think America. I don't know what you're trying to say right now, but. <laughs> Think America has some all right looking people. Hot also, girls are I'm everywhere. Saying. Is what I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what scale do we want to use, and let's rate the movie. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to rate mine on a scale of five dick shaped pool floaties. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give this four out of five dick floaties. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to rate mine on a scale of a, like, five size 32 brightly colored printed string bikinis Ooh. worn with confidence. Yes. And I'm going to I'm gonna go with a similar four out of five. Yes. Would have been a five out of five had we fleshed out some of the other characters. Could have been perfect, but Yes. And we've we only done six episodes, so I'm assuming we're yeah. going to come back with a full ten. Again, for next. there's always hope. Yeah. There's always hope for season two. Yes. Hope you enjoyed this episode on Shrill. Please remember to follow Ellen, show her some love. She's on Instagram at underscore Ellen is dead. And also hit us up. Tell us what you thought about the episode. Tell us if you started watching Shrill, what you thought. We're on Instagram at Strong Female Pod. And then we're also on Twitter at SFL underscore Chicago. We'll see you next week. Bye.